through prayer as well. So my beautiful friends, that Truth and Reconciliation Task Force may have started in 2018, but it really has been, right, at least, at least 25 years in the making. And there's so many other people like Sarah Peltier that came before us, who was the chair of LUNEC, you know, Sarah Peltier Ba, who like, you know, was also, again, a leader in education and truth and reconciliation before it actually had that name. So we thank all of those, again, those good two-leggeds that came before us and the more than humans, right? And the land upon which Laurentian University sits, my friends, right? And that is, again, our treaty territory and the lands of our people. So truth and reconciliation, what is it really about, right? It's about truth-telling, but it's also about having, again, definitive and evidence-based recommendations to make things happen, right? To make things happen. And what I love about the recommendations that are in this report is that they are tangible, but it's also something that we're all going to need to be a part of. And I have my own choices there, ones that I'm like, yes, let me be involved. And it's the ones that are always related to education and language, right? Because that's something that I also really love is education and language. So there's so many opportunities for all of us to be involved, right? And to say, yes, this is like, this is ours because it does, it belongs to us. So my beautiful friends, what I want you to do is to take your object. All right, take your object. I think I might need a little bit of lipstick while I'm at it. Okay, <laughs> only makeup I wear. So what I want you to do, my friends, again, your right is yes, your left is no, and in the middle is I don't know yet. And that's okay to do that, right? So Truth and Reconciliation Task Force. Many of you here were involved in it. I see your faces. We had the biggest groups, right? Amazing participation. So yes or no, my beautiful friends, my beautiful friends, right? So truth, right? So the truth. Are you, again, going to be a part of the Truth and Reconciliation recommendations moving forward? Yes or no, or maybe, oh, well, it's part of my job. No, you're like, you know what? It comes from the heart and the spirit, right? From the heart and spirit. Now let's go for another one. Truth and reconciliation recommendations, okay? Truth and reconciliation recommendations. So this is what it is. Are you looking forward to seeing the one in the Anishinaab Bemwin recommendations? And again, the highlighting of our language here. Again, are you looking forward to seeing that come to fruition? Yes or no? Maybe ah, my lipstick. I'll have to use my toilet paper because I got a cold. Now, yes or no? Okay, yes or no? All right. Do you look forward again to seeing the outcomes again of these recommendations, right? Again, being these recommendations that are not only going to lead to student success and diversity, but also have a personal impact for all of our communities. Yes or no? Or I don't know. Yes. <laughs> now, my friends, with that, I say to all of you wonderful peepsters, again, me, Gwetch, and again, you know, I, I thank those that came before us, again, for getting us here to this journey. And um, I have toilet paper here, my friends, and uh, I don't have anything at all, okay? Seasonal allergies, but I can't leave my house, okay? I can't leave my house, right? Because the moment that I sneeze, right? Yeah. Nobody wants to be around me. So here I am. I am surrounded by your, my virtual friends here as we launch the Truth and Reconciliation Task Force report. So miigwech, let me see the hands. Try it, you can do it. It won't hurt you, try it, try it. Miigwech, miigwech. And thank you, yeah, that's it for me. Gotta grab my lipstick. Okay, miigwech Pamela. That was a very energetic and highly informative presentation. <laughs> Big wedge again. Um, next, I think I would like to call on Dr. Robert Hache on behalf of the university to share a few words. Dr. Hache. Thank you very much, Raymond and uh, Miigwech. Uh, uh, Miigwech, Pamela, I'm not sure how to follow that. Uh, so uh, let, let me try in my more understated fashion to uh, say Ani Bozu. Bonjour, hello everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today and allow me to start off uh, by saying how pleased I am with the work of the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Task Force. 
The recommendations of this task force are very important, and I look forward to working towards the implementation of these recommendations. Depuis que je suis arrivé à l'ancienne, j'ai eu l'occasion d'interagir avec plusieurs membres de notre communauté dédiés au savoir des cultures des Premières Nations, Métis et Inuits. Notre environnement ici à l'ancienne nous présente l'opportunité de véritablement renforcer notre présence comme chef de file en éducation autochtone et je suis prêt à faire tout ce que je peux pour promouvoir cet objectif. At this time, we are presented with a tremendous opportunity. Laurentian is at, a, is at a point in its history where it has a base and infrastructure to demonstrate its leadership in Indigenous education while emphasizing our close ties to the Anishinaabeg and Métis peoples of the region and beyond. We must commit to being true champions of truth and reconciliation through education, dialogue, and our actions. The work of this task force shows us the path towards doing so. Last year, we hosted Justice Murray Sinclair on campus. Justice Sinclair spoke of education as the primary tool to advance truth and reconciliation. This rings true at Laurentian and must be emphasized in the wake of events throughout the world that clearly demonstrate the continuing existence of racism, discrimination, particularly in its systemic forms. I want to say chi miigwech to Lunek and to all those who participated on the Truth and Reconciliation Task Force for your commitment. This report from cover to cover speaks of the importance of our approach. It speaks of the importance of equality, <coughs> sorry, of quality and substance of Indigenous education across faculties and how we can take tangible steps in delivering this. Community engagement will be an essential component of accomplishing the many objectives laid out in this report and ensuring that we are grounded in the knowledge and culture of First Nations and Indigenous peoples in the region. En ce moment, nous réfléchissons à la meilleure façon d'aller de, de l'avant, alors que les possibilités offertes par ce rapport nous sont présentées. Je m'engage à faire en sorte que nous nous concentrions les ressources destinées à l'éducation autochtone sur les recommandations de ce groupe de travail. Ce travail est d'une grande importance pour que nous sommes en tant que communauté et que nous voulons et ce que nous voulons réaliser. Chief Miigwech to Shelley Moore Frappier, our interim associate dean, our uh, interim associate vice president, sorry, academic and indigenous programs, for seeing to the conclusion of this report by the task force. I'd also like to make a special acknowledgement of our former Associate Vice President, Dr. Sheila Kotit Meek, and again, LUNEC, who were instrumental in getting this work started, and to who much of the progress Laurentian has seen in Indigenous education over the past several decades and beyond. I also would like to thank the Indigenous Sharing and Learning Center and the Indigenous Students Affairs team, who worked tirelessly to support all of this work and to support our students. Without you, none of this would be possible. Miigwech. Thank you to all of those who have joined us this afternoon. Merci beaucoup et profitez des activités de la semaine de reconnaissance des traités. Miigwech. Miigwech, thank you and merci Dr. Hasse. Um, I'd now like to uh, call upon Roxanne if you would provide us uh, with some comments, please. Wow, these are pretty tough acts to follow. You know, I'm glad Marty's last. <laughs> I'm glad you showed up, Marty, because I was last. <laughs> so uh, my name is Roxanne. Pretty much uh, everybody pretty much knows me. Um, I'm the chair at LUNEC, and uh, like Pam said, I think I feel like a dinosaur. I've been there so long, but um, you know, um, I. I love the work that we are doing at the university and um, you know I'd like to thank all of those people who like came before us and um, started the work and all the people um, that uh, committed to um, being part of this whole, whole process you know this really is um, a historic moment for um, the university and um, you know and I commend the leadership because um, you know, reconciliation is like a, a marriage, I guess, you know, and if only one person is working at it, well, then it doesn't work out very good. Um, so anyway, um, when Raymond called me, um, I said, okay, I only want to talk about two things, um, you know, and that's 
Um, what does t uh, Truth and Reconciliation, this report, mean to the staff, the faculty, and the students? And I think, you know, right now there's a willingness and a desire and most of all, a commitment to, to work together to uh, strengthening these relationships. You know, the task force work was um, just the first step in this whole process. Um, through this work, we've, um, you know, had hard conversations. And sometimes these conversations, um, you know, are very difficult. And, you know, you have to acknowledge those truths, you know. And, um, you know, there were some really hard issues and, um, you know, but it, that we spoke about, but um, at the end of the day, you know, it's about working together to um, develop uh, recommendations as how do we to move forward. So um, reconciliation is a uh, part of a healing process um, about healing our relationship between Indigenous people you know, and the um, university. And, you know, as part of that healing process, you know, we talk about the, it requires truth. Pam started out by talking about truth. Respect, you know, there's apologies or acknowledgements. And then there's that commitment, that redress, uh, to redress past harms. So I'm pleased that we're doing these re uh, this work for many reasons. You know, for one, you know, uh, the university is located in Anishinaabek territory, and this is Treaty Week this week. Um, you know, so, you know, it's, I'm really happy that we're doing this today. Um, you know, uh, Sunday is Aboriginal Veterans Day, you know, and I, I see that Amy has, um, you know, um, her background, she's acknowledging that. You know, the university has 1,600 self-identified Indigenous students. What better reason to want to do this work, you know? Um, and then the university has this tricultural mandate. And, you know, at LUNEC, we often talk about what does that look like to us as Indigenous people, you know? And so I think part of this whole truth and reconciliation is, you know, we're able to have that conversation what does it look? What does uh, that mandate look like? What what needs to be included in that? You know, through an indigenous lens. So originally, I guess um, there were thirty two recommendations that came out of this uh, report, and you know that's a lot of recommendations. So um, you know, uh, the committee worked together to pick out ten really achievable recommendations and um, you know so the 10 recommendations that came out of that were like the land acknowledgement Raymond did the land acknowledgement languages you know land-based learning uh, creating those spaces um, you know how teachers qualifications um, cultural competency uh, ensuring that there's knowledge from local people so it, connecting to our, our communities around us um, you know, and uh, increasing engagement and involvement and ensuring that, you know, that the goals are associated with reconciliation or high, connected to those hiring practices and onboarding of uh, new faculty and staff. So those are all achievable uh, recommendations um, that I think that we need to, that we're going to work towards. So um, what would I like to see come out of this report? Well, you know, uh, I've seen, like many of you folks, um, a lot of really good reports um, written over the years and they sit on shelves. You know, I've got a whole, look at, behind me, there's a whole shelf full of uh, reports, I guess, <laughs> to turn my... So I don't want to see that happen with this report. You know, I want to see um, these recommendations implemented you know and if that and what what i what i'm th what we we talked about was maybe creating another task force you know to guide this process and uh, to evaluate and measure how well we're doing you know and i know that this fits right in with um you know education you know because we always have to evaluate and measure everything every move we make so um, this report should be no different. You know, we need to, it's great that we say we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, but how do we evaluate that? And how do we make sure that, you know, that we are um, having, making change, I guess. 
um, we need to continue, like even though we have these 10 recommendations, you know, we need to continue to um, ask ourselves, uh, what can we do next? You know, what can we do today? What can we do next week? What can we do next month? And what are we gonna do a decade from now? What can we keep doing to improve? So we need to make reconciliation must lead to substantive change. It just, and, and become a way of life. So um, Marie Jose was at our last LUNEC meeting and I love her. She says, I need to feel it. So when, when people come to our university at Laurentian, you know, they need to feel that indigenous presence. They need to see that good relationship. You know, I want to see the language, Anishinaabe language. You know, we've, we've started that process by putting up signs. But, you know, I want to see all Indigenous languages everywhere, you know, within the university. And people speaking that language, you know, like, you know, I'm not the greatest language speaker, but, you know, nobody makes fun of me the way I say things. You know, like, I try French. My French is horrible, you know, and it's okay. You know that but at least i try i make that effort and that's what i would like to see from all the non-indigenous faculty and stuff and as professors and people who are working within the university you know encourage that it like i had fred wheatley as my language instructor i went to trent i'm not a laurentian person i went to trent and i had fred wheatley for two years he was my language instructor in anishinaabe with. And I was horrible, like absolutely horrible language speaker. But, and I would laugh and Fred says, you know, it's okay to laugh, Roxanne. You know, you know, that's how you learn, you know, is you can have fun with the language. And, you know, if you make mistakes, don't be shy about it. Just, you know, ask somebody to help you out, you know? So, you know, and I wanna see those systemic barriers removed and policies that, you know, hold people back and so, so that at some point we want to reach a point where those are non-existence. There is no racism. There is no uh, barriers. Um, you know, equality. You know, equality for everybody. I want to see that pride in histories of our people throughout that university, whether that's art or whether it's language or you know more faculty or whatever and students. Um, you know, and I want to know that Laurentian you know, after being a dinosaur there for all these years, I want to know that Laurentian has become a leader and it's a better place to be for Indigenous learners. Miigwech. Ah, miigwech, Roxanne. Thank you very much for those uh, very wise words. Um, we all, of course, place a, a great emphasis on use of Nishnab and Win in the uh, university. So we are working towards that. Um, so to uh, wrap up the opening remarks, I'd just like to call on uh, Martin Baer to share a few words with the group. Martin? Amigo Trey, Jimmy Hitchin, and Kirch Migo, Shindiginiwi, Ogi Shay, Wikidia, and be shorn up quick. So I'll watch Dossigo, Wakidia, Nimigo, Nikwenda, and I'll go down the big share task force members, you know, get the jig, you know, Skuna jig, you know, the Dinoje and Nankiak. Because it took Pandam Chizen again. He got just in him, Kiluji Gandam de Biop. I just want to start off by thanking the task force members, the elders, students, staff that were all part of the task force team that create for creating your, generating your time and your creativity and sharing your thoughts and insights it, that went to, to help produce this, uh, this report. I think it's, um, it's very timely that uh, we're tabling this this today, and it's good to have a, a forum to talk about it a bit more and, and share ideas. You know, the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission identified universities and colleges as key educational institutions that play a pivotal pivotal role in championing reconciliation through education. and And Laurentian, <clears throat> I think, has its own role to play in furthering reconciliation and, and implementing the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the implementing the report that we're here, that we're assembled here to talk about this afternoon. <clears throat> I think uh, there's some very excellent recommendations in the, in the report. 
Um, I think we have to go through it in a bit more detail. Uh, prioritize the recommendations are there because as uh, as Ray and Roxanne stated, you know, this is this isn't done today, this afternoon, just because we're tabling the report and having a short conversation about it doesn't mean our jobs are done. In fact, our jobs are just beginning. And so when I look through the recommendations and see ideas like having an acknowledgement at the entrance to the university that we're on, we're in the traditional territory of the Robinson Huron Treaty of 1850 and using the land shared by uh, Tigmikshing Nishnabek and Wanapte First Nation, I think those are really small but very important and symbolic steps we can take to make the university more reflective of the territory in which it's situated on. And so, you know, I think that's a that's a, a good recommendation to to reflect on. Um, I know Ray, we've got Ray working on a, a language initiative, and it's mentioned in the in Lunic strategic plan. It's in the Laurentian University strategic plan, and so. I think that's also a really important, you know, first step in helping to revitalize Nishnabemwin at uh, at Laurentian University and helping to helping us to preserve and promote our Nishnabe languages going further and educating the broader public about the importance of preserving our languages and and, and culture. Um, I also really found the the recommendation uh, about um, training providing training on Nishnabe culture and history and language to senior staff, uh, students, and uh, senior administration staff. And, and, and I think that, you know, something like that should be, should be mandatory for all senior staff and um, other support staff at the, at the university. So there's a lot of good stuff in that, in that report and a lot of good recommendations, but I think it'll be important to make sure it isn't, it doesn't just sit on a shelf somewhere and we, you know, we have this celebration today then, but then we forget about it. I think we have to go through it, um, prioritize the recommendations that are in there and, and start making this uh, report come to life and, and change the uh, the culture at, at Laurentian University and, and in the process helping to educate our friends about who we are as Anishinaabe people and, you know, what what our languages are and our treaties I think that's uh, that's really important, and that's really what was behind the the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission's report when it was first tabled as well. So, um, so I'm looking forward to discussing the report more, um, particularly looking at the recommendations and prioritizing them, and and also seeing how we can bring uh, some of those recommendations to life, and and uh, you know, in the process, grant some you know. Um, share in the pride that we have as Nishnabe people and, and, and share our culture and our language with those around us and, and, and those that are not Nishnabe people. I think it's really important to understand the importance of that education. It was also, I just, this morning I looked at the RCAP report from 1996 and, you know, a lot of these uh, recommendations were also echoed in that report, the need to educate Canadians about the the, uh, our, our dreams and our aspirations and our, our history and our culture. And, I, and, uh, and so I think that that work starts with the launch of this, um, this report this afternoon. So with that, I'll close and, and say uh, um, thank uh, Pam for her, her remarks and, and Roxanne and uh, Dr. Hashe as well for, for all of your uh, insightful comments and remarks you shared this afternoon. And say to, <coughs> to all of you for being part of this. It's a really important initiative. And I'm glad that you took the time to, to be part of this. So to Ah, uh -huh, to Martin. Excellent. That's, uh, it's great that you mentioned the RCAP report and uh, just as an indicator of how long it's been to get to this point, and again, emphasizing that we've got a long road ahead of us, but we're um, making the right steps to get moving in the right direction. So um, with that, I'd like to move on to a, uh, a panel discussion with our guest speakers here today. And I'd like to begin with a question on um, the report itself and You've already elaborated on your thoughts, initial thoughts on the report. I'm just wondering if you have any additional reaction to some of the recommendations that you may have seen in the report and uh, perhaps what you feel maybe should be prioritized. Anyone want to jump in on that? Panel members? 
Okay, Pamela. All right there, Ani and Bojo, Kwekwe, Wache, Sego, Tanse, everybody. And, um, and so for me, right, so it's a matter of perspective. And what's going to happen is that, you know, Marty's going to be like, oh, you know, this is the priority. My friend Rocks there is going to say this is the priority. You know, Robert's going to say, well, this is the priority because it is. It's all about context. So for me, like I knew that this was going to happen, you know, because I was at the initial, like, you know, I was at the four meetings, but I am so excited, right? So the moment that I saw, you know, again, just reaffirmed that, you know, increasing land-based learning sites, right? For teaching and learning and research, right? So having those approaches, land-based, for me, is like when I went, oh! And the reason being is because I come from um, an elementary and secondary background. I teach in a faculty of education. I still work with students from K to 12. And what I have found, right, is that taking a look at the university, some of the most meaningful connections when it comes to Anishinaabek teachings, um, you know, come from that connection to land and that spiritual, again, connection, right? So again, land-based teachings that are physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual, that's sacred. So for me, out of all of the recommendations, right, when I look at land-based learning, I think, wow, the language is embedded there, right? It's already there. And that that is one way as well to do specialized training with faculty who are seeking to teach courses with Indigenous content is to have those experiences, right, with our more than humans and Mother Earth. So... For me, that was really absolutely critical. You know, I look at cultural competency and it's nice, you know, to have the occasional module, the workshop, you know, do some reading, but cultural competency, like in a safe space, you know, where else to have it but on the land, right? You know, where, where we're comforted, where we are being, again, taken care of by our first mother. So for me, I know that land-based learning um, is something that I, you know, um, you know, have really tried to work on the past couple of years and uh, tried to bring more of it in myself. But once I saw it, I thought, okay, now I want to see the implementation of it. What does it look like over the next three, five, ten plus years? So that's what I'm excited about. And um, is it a priority? For me, yes, you know, but my other colleagues and the wonderful peepsters here might have a very different story. And again, Jimmy Gwetch, for everybody that took their time, you know, on a Friday afternoon, we all got Zoom fatigue, right? But you're here. So, me Gwetch. Me Gwetch, Pam. Uh, any of our other panel members care to elaborate on uh, their thoughts on the report and its recommendations? Well, maybe, maybe I, what I what I will what I'll say is that I'll start by disagreeing a little bit with Pamela. Uh, I'm not going to say what I see as the priorities uh, because I don't think it is for me to say what the priorities are. I think it is for me to listen uh, to the work of the task force, to listen to the community as they express the priorities, and it is for me uh, to listen, hear, understand, and then move to help implement the priorities as they are identified by our community. Uh, and I think that's the way that we can ultimately make the best, most engaged progress. Thank you, Dr. Hashing. Um, <clears throat> Ray, I'd just like to offer a, a, a brief comment. Um, first of all, I think it's a really, really good report. It has a lot of really, really good recommendations. Um, I noted in the report that there's, there's reference to um, all the new Bachelor of Arts students uh, as of 2017 having to have six six uh, credits and and that's good that's that's a good start but i would like to see the day where it's mandatory that every graduate of laurentian university has to graduate with you know one course just just to get the university has a general and good understanding of nishtaba history and culture and traditions and I think that would make us, you know, a little different than a lot of universities out there. We're situated right in the, right in the heart of the Robinson Huron Treaty territory. We've got some 21 First Nations that surround us, and I think it it should be on all graduates to graduate from the Renton University by having to take a a six credit um, 
Nishnabe course, like on Nishnabe history and culture, it's one thing to have to take courses that have uh, Nishnabe uh, or native uh, content, but that's just a small piece of the the overall course. And and while that's good, encouraging, I think that you know we should really work hard to um, make it a mandatory that everyone, much like our students have to have English and and science, well, throw Nishnabe in there as well. History. Um, as also uh, being a, a mandatory requirement in order to graduate, because I think that's what will distinguish us from other universities, and it'll help educate those around us about our history and our aspirations. So I, 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 I like the reference in the report to that, but I think it's it's just a start. I think um, you know, we have, uh, you know, we're trying to make sure that all of our courses have some Aboriginal content in it, and that's good. But we should all, you know, make it mandatory that every student has to have, a, you know, that that one course as part of their graduation requirements. Um, I also think it's not going to be a big effort to to um, provide basic um, basic awareness training to senior administration staff on on our our culture, our treaty um, treaties in the area, and um, also maybe maybe someday even. Uh, a uh, like introductory Nishnabe in course and have every um, support staff that has to go and transfer in the field language. You know, I mean, oh, good morning. You know, that's, that's not asking much. And, 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 uh, I think um, I think it would be good. Uh, those would be good first steps. I think uh, I think my audio was out there. Yeah, you're getting a little staticky there for a second. Yeah, yeah, I see that. So Miigwech, that's uh, yeah. uh -huh. um, Roxanne, did you have anything that you would like to add to uh, your thoughts on the report itself? Well, I uh, think they're all amazing recommendations. Um, you know, and I, um, if I had to choose one and somebody who doesn't actually work at the university, <laughs> I'm all about community, you know, and everything starts with community. And, um, you know, so I like the idea of, um, you know, doing the work at the community level and making our community a part of the university. And, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, we go to community for support or resources or to find an elder or, you know, to find a resource person or maybe to use their land to uh, host something, you know, but I, I, I think we need, we can go well beyond that, you know, and, um, you know, and so doing that outreach with community and um, making sure that um, we're not just taking, that we're giving back to community. I know I'm all about giving back. And so there's that, there has to be that reciprocity. And, um, you know, maybe, um, you know, this is a conversation we have, um, you know, how do we give back to the community where our university is hosting their classes and educating our children. So I'm about community. Excellent. Great thoughts, Roxanne. Um, I'd like to talk about maybe the uh, implementation of the report at this point and uh, pose a question to the group as to uh, how can we ensure that the recommendations of this report will be acted upon consistently and in a measurable manner? Uh, um, I think that's a real good, real great question, Ray. Um, I think whether it's through <clears throat> through LUNIC or if we form a subcommittee to oversee the implementation of the recommendations in the report, I think that would be good because, um, you know, like I said, sometimes there's there's reports that over time, uh, you know, lots of fanfare when they're launched and then then they're they're quickly forgotten about and are left on a shelf. So I think it, it's going to require either through the through LUNIC committee to uh, go through the report, have a more fulsome discussion, and, and and start to prioritize the, you know, maybe pick three recommendations that we uh, we work on to to um, target for implementation, and then just monitor the monitor the impl implementation of uh, the work that's required to um, to fulfill those the requirements that are set out in the in the recommendations. 
and then you know pick another three but but make sure we we go through the whole report and we go through all the recommendations and and really start to make um you know bring the report to life in in, in that regard um and and so i think it, it'll be important to you know have a group whether that's lunic or a subcommittee sit down and look at the report more carefully and especially the recommendations and then just target some you know for say three or four for recommendation looking at uh, what are the implications of uh, of um, implementing those recommendations and and uh, reporting you know back to uh, to the uh, board of governors on our on our progress and back to lunic on the progress we're making and really make it part of our part of our work plan um, you know both for this year and, and uh, the years uh, years ahead but but not taking forever to to implement these recommendations either I, I was hesitant to use the word years but just recognizing you know it's been a difficult year with COVID it's been been difficult to get together and sometimes that places strains and challenges on our ability to to get work done and reach out to our communities about about the uh, the work we're doing and so uh, you know I think it, it's fair that you know this will take take some time and I think to to be fair to the process we should uh we should uh, you know, allocate enough time to um, to work on this further. So, Miigwech. Oh, Miigwech, Martin. Yes, Pamela? So, Ray, yeah. So, I mean, what's really cool, right? Like, and I think what's really amazing is that, you know, there's 25 of us here. And, you know, when we look at those recommendations, right, I think it's important to think about the work that we've already done, right? So it's not like, you know, we're starting anew. It's like, you know, da, 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 you know, here we are, you know, being transported, you know, uh, into a time where we haven't done the work. So I think taking the recommendations themselves and just like Marty said, but like saying, okay, well, where have we done land-based education so far? What, like, what opportunities and like, you know, what do we have right now? And then again, like setting those really clear implementation goals. Well, what does it look like when it's fulsome, right? And I think that that really does like, you know, have to be informed. You know, we need to have our traditional knowledge keepers. We need to have, again, like, you know, um, subcommittees that are really targeted and focused in on that type of work because i mean you look here right you look and i've got you know my screen wide open and you know for every person that's here i can say oh yeah i remember you know when they did this land-based activity oh yeah they did do cultural competency yes you know they did offer an Anishinaab Bemwin workshop or they tied it to their course so the fact is i think that like you know having that what we've done and then setting you know those measurable goals and it is, we want to be able to see short term, mid term, and also long term, right? So for me, you know, I look at this group here and I'm just like, wow, you know, I know, like, you know, looking, I know most of the people here. And I'm thinking, wow, I know what their contributions have been so far, you know, when I think about, again, those 10 recommendations. So I think that, you know, some of the work has already been done, but we do need more targeted resources to do that. So we don't want the bulk of that report and those recommendations to be on eight to 10 people, right? So we really need to think about how it's resourced as well. So those are my thoughts, my friends, okay? And uh, miigwech, yeah, miigwech again. <laughs> miigwech, Pamela? Um, Roxanne or Dr. Hashley, did you have anything that you wanted to add to that? Um, I, I love the words of my friends here, um, you know, and having a work plan and following up. Um, but the reconciliation is, and I just want to remind everybody that reconciliation isn't about us doing all the work okay for the university everybody has to be on board so uh, my, i have a little maybe a little different idea of how this uh can happen we have all of our faculties right and um you know this is about bringing our indigenous and non-indigenous people together so that we can um i don't know re fix our marriage if that's what you want to call it so you know, so ha my thoughts are is to have the faculties develop their own work plan. We, we go through strategic planning all the time and use these recommendations and use LUNAC and um, our, our group as a, a sounding board to, um, you know, 
support them in implementing those recommendations. You know, because it can't always be, um, you know, like we are always the one pushing for something at the university. We want everybody to, to be part of this. So those are my thoughts. And I, and I do think, I agree that that's key, Roxanne, that we have a distributed effort uh, to respond to this. And, and I know, uh, Maddie Jose, our, our new provost, who I, I don't see on the call uh, this afternoon, but I know that she has been working actively uh, to look at how we can engage people across the university uh, in mechanisms that we can that, that we can use to do that. The other thing I would add uh, to to what's been said is that we also have a position of ABP Indigenous programs who explicitly has a mandate to. Uh, to, to do things that I would say very much include being a champion for the recommendations of this report. Uh, and, and that is another way that we can bring leadership uh, to the community. Uh, and because I do agree, we all have to work together in getting this done. It's not, it's not oh, you did a report, now go implement it. Uh, by no means is that the way forward. Thank you, Dr. Hashi. Um, I just like to add to that, that um, this, uh, the fact that my position has been created and I've been in uh, working for the ranch in for just a little over the past six months, I think that that speaks to the commitment that the university is making to this process. As we are looking at um, a big part of my job is involved with Nishnabe and revitalization both within the institution and assisting with the communities with their efforts towards that as well. Um, but aside um, from the, uh, the major um, component of Nishnabe uh, my position will also involve um, working on implementing some of the other recommendations that uh, we may uh, look at going forward based on uh, what uh, LUNEC has to say about it as well as um, senior administration with the university. So I think working together, we can accomplish a lot here. And um, part of my reason for being with this position is to implement a lot of these recommendations contained in the report. So um, I'd just like to pass along that I'll be um, working towards that as well too, and looking to work in partnership with, um, the, with all of you people in terms of implementing this report. So I see that we're coming up on about uh, five minutes left in our time. I'm just wondering if um, we can perhaps get some closing remarks briefly from each of our uh, panel members before we sign off. Uh, would you like to begin, Paula? And uh, the only words that I have about this work going forward and all these amazing people here, in the words of my family from Wiki, from Wakwem Kong, Shtataha! That's what I'd like to say is Shtataha! And that's like a big exclamation mark, all right? So that's what I gotta say, and that's all. Shtataha, <laughs> mm -hmm. I agree. Wow, it is, yes. <laughs> Any of other panel members have any comments to uh, include today? I'd just like to thank uh, all members of the task force again for the work that they have done so far, and, but then to highlight that the work really is just beginning with the report, uh, and it's the implementation that we have to see to and ensure that it happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, miigwech, Dr. Hashe. Uh, Roxanne or Martin, did you care to uh, offer any words to conclude? I just, I, I'm really excited about the report. Um, you know, I'm really looking forward to, um, you know, me, the implementation phase, I guess, and uh, seeing, um, you know, like being able to see it, feel it, you know. So I, I, I'm, I'm really happy and I hope we move forward in a good way and everybody's on board to support this. So miigwech. Mm -hmm. Like Roxanne? Yeah, uh, Ray, I just want to echo Pam's uh, comments of Shtataha. It, uh, it is a big deal. And up to Ganeshin, Ni, as you be got action and Ni, Monday report, Minosha, Migochke, you know, Jinda, Ibizagi, Miluzindagi, Nagoma Pishkana quick. I just want to say, uh, like, it is a big, uh, a really big, uh, important day, and, and uh, we have a lot of uh, important work ahead. 
And I just wanted to say uh, to me, get for everybody for um, being part of this this afternoon and, and setting aside some time to be be part of this in, an important initiative. So I think uh, we've got some exciting times ahead and um, and I look forward to uh, being part of that work. So miigwech, everybody. Miigwech, Martin. And on that note, I would just uh, think I'd like to wrap up by uh, saying to miigwech to each and every one of you for uh, participating and are observing our um, presentation today and discussion. Uh, very good points made by all of our uh, panel members and guest speakers today. To miigwech for that. We have a lot of work on our plate and uh, I foresee good things happening going forward for the university and the communities that surround us. So um, I guess with that, we'll just uh, say to miigwech and wish you all a, a great weekend. And I look forward to working with you in whatever capacities going forward. So, chumi gwech, everyone. Chumi gwech. Ah, miigwech. Bama. Uh huh. Bama. Bama, Pete.